This video is for anybody, but it's specifically for spiritual people, on the healing journey people, and ex-Christians. Have y'all ever noticed just how much colonialism has tampered with your sense of morality? Throughout my spiritual journey, I had this reoccurring issue with the left versus right mentality, the is it right or is it wrong mentality. And a big reason for this, I feel, is my strong Christian upbringing. Because I feel like in the church, what's right and what's wrong is really black and white. When you grew up in a church house, it was either okay or you had to hide it. Because the big thing with church people is if they do not understand it, they do not like it. And that's why a lot of old heads out here calling everything under the sun demonic. But anyway, it was a reoccurring issue throughout my spiritual journey. And it came up a couple of times in different cases. For one, it was my personal definition of forgiveness. Two was my ideology. Do I want to stick to my leftist ideals and take heed to how reality is? Or do I want to learn how to love everyone and overlook their flaws and let go of this internalized anger I have towards ignorant people? Three was forgiving myself. Like, it was acknowledging my flaws, what I've done wrong, and whether or not I want to keep that weight on me versus do I finally forgive myself and let it go? So fast forward after some circumstances, I learned something really important. It was kind of weird how something so simple was such an important lesson for me. Two things can be true at once. Going back to forgiveness and my circumstances, it was whether or not I wanted to carry out a relationship with my estranged family. All the factors were going through my mind, how much grudge and resentment I was holding, what they've done to me, what I've done to them, what I've said, my regrets. So the big takeaway was, okay, so you really did your best with me. Your best was kind of shit sometimes, but you were doing what you knew. You were doing with what you had. All these factors just come in with my family. It was colonial Christianity's effect on the black community. It was the toxic hypermasculinity of the black community they enforced on me. It was actually a strong sense of anti-blackness as well. So I had to learn how to understand all these things and the things that they were dealing with and their demons that they were fighting. But at the same time, I could acknowledge how they hurt me, a child, and how I never really received closure for that and how I never really felt a sense of actual love, genuine love, unconditional love. And I was stressing out so bad because I thought I needed to come up with an answer and I felt so childish because I'm like, it's been three years, why am I still so bent out of shape about this? And the universe sent me a dream. Now I can't really remember the first part of the dream, I always remember an important part about it though. So in a dream, I knew I was being chased by zombies and by the time they finally caught me, the dream faded to black, but it didn't end. I could hear them gnawing on something. I could feel their teeth all over my body. And then finally my alarm woke me up and by that time I had to go to work and I didn't really have time to really interpret what that dream meant, but I sort of pieced it together soon after. Something was eating me from the inside. I figured this out by the time I got to the bus and out of nowhere, the first thing I did was text my mom and I cursed her out. Now I was unsure about this at first because I'm like, this is not really the spiritual thing to do. But then I thought on it and I'm like, my whole life I was taught to be the bigger person. Me trying to figure out all this information, me reading books, me reading articles, me trying from the time I was a child to a young adult with them. That was my definition of love. That was my definition of forgiveness. Me cursing out my emotional abuser growing up, the weight that it lifted right then and there, it was crazy, and the thing is, I couldn't even find it in me to feel bad about it. Because then I also realized, when I was younger, I used to have these anger issues whenever someone tried to cross me, whenever someone belittled me, whenever someone came at me sideways. It was always so hyper-aggressive, and I verbally destroyed them. Like, there was no chill inside of me, and I went from 0 to 80. And I realize now the reason for that is because I was never able to curse her out because I was afraid of being punished. I was afraid of being homeless because I knew these motherfuckers were about to kick me out as soon as I did it. That's what I've been missing this whole time. That was my version of healing and it was hilarious to me because my ideal spirituality never included cursing someone out. And that led over to my leftist ideology. It finally made me realize why do I have to drop my ideals? Why do I have to ignore the fact that some people are part of the problem? And that is when I learned about divine anger. There just comes times where you keep digging and digging, trying to get to the source of your anger, and then you realize 
there's no getting rid of it. You can't just wipe away your anger away for everything. There's going to be certain things that you are going to be pissed off by. And that's important because you need to have some sort of standards for yourself and your reality. Injustice needs to piss us off. The situation a lot of us in needs to piss us off. The state of the world should piss us off. And no, that doesn't mean not be happy. A lot of people think that happiness is going to be canceled out by the anger. No, they can coexist because all your emotions are part of you. Your sadness, anger, joy, your fear, all of them. All of your emotions have either gifted you, tried to teach you something, or protect you from something. Anger comes when something needs to be acknowledged, either something you need to heal from or something that just needs to be acknowledged or seen. You need to tread lightly with fear because it can easily turn into ignorance, but fear keeps us alive. Crying is natural. Sadness is natural. It's supposed to happen. You're not anything weaker or less for feeling sad. It really sometimes just shows how much you care about something. Your emotions are going to be part of you, but you have to see them as that. You have to respect them and love them, but you have to just look at them and say, I love you, but you're not going to overpower me. I'm behind the driver's seat. You can stay here with me, but I'm in charge. This was the biggest mindfuck for me. You know what they meant by feel your emotions? They literally meant feel your emotions. Like when I'm angry, I feel a little pressure behind this area of my face. And I just stand there and I feel it. And it eventually just fades away. And I'm like, this whole time, they meant that shit literally. People be like, stop intellectualizing your feelings. I'm like... And when I got here with my feelings, I finally put the nail in the coffin with this one because it was something I've been working on for the last three years. I could finally just say, I've made mistakes. I've said things. I've done things. I've hurt people. But at the same time, I was going through my own shit. That does not excuse it, but it does correlate to how I became that type of person. So I could either forgive myself or I would be doomed to repeat the same process over and over. I could learn to accept myself, that part of myself, or I continue to fight it pretending that I am not that person. When that person and I are the same person, that is me, that is my inner child, my inner teenager, and I can't abandon them. Because if I do, I am doomed to repeat the same mistakes over because I am fighting that part inside of me. So this video is really long, but I just find it really funny how a lot of things that I learned along the way as my spiritual journey had really contradicting takes than a lot of things I learned in Christianity. Feeling your emotions, especially your anger. Redefining forgiveness, not everything has to be black and white. Not feeling inclined to love the neighbor that doesn't love me. Y'all, even now, I was thinking about it today. Have you ever thought about lying? Everyone's like, oh, there's never any reason to lie. I'm like, Because mm. think about it. Think about the top sins. Are you really going to come for someone for killing their rapist? Are you going to come at someone for fighting their abuser? Look at Cardi B. Are you going to be mad at someone who hustled a hustler? Stealing. I've been working in retail for years. If you worked in retail and you were the type of person who makes it your mission to catch people stealing, you are a piece of shit. I don't care if you're doing your job. Fuck you. Especially if they're stealing food. As for lying, you can't communicate the truth with some people. Like, think in terms of your job. You do not tell your job the truth. If they do not give you that day off you asked for, you are sick. Because unless someone or you is sick or <clears throat> most likely the job will not understand. And think in terms of feminism. A lot of men out here are telling women, why don't you just try to be blunt and honest with him? Because he might hurt her. Some of these guys do not know how to take rejection or take any form of critique. A lot of people out here are not built to take honesty. And it's time that we all need to be real about that. Like, not every moment needs to be told with the truth. Like, never lie to your circle or your loved ones. Never. But I feel like some of us have been guilted into feeling bad about lying when in reality, sometimes you just need it. And that's what I mean. I feel like this pseudo-spirituality, Western science spirituality is really fucking or used to fuck with my sense of morality because again nothing is black and white there's always going to be certain case scenarios and a lot of people can be like well how do you define i'm like it should really be obvious i don't know what y'all really want me to say like the cases of stealing the english museum the british museum whatever cases on lying when your lie hurts someone whenever the lie is not looking out for your protection or your well-being this video is long as fuck and I apologize for that, but I hope someone relates.